it's recording. All right, I'm really excited. This has um, been a long time coming, and thank you all for joining. I, um, I'm really excited having this team of um, people to brainstorm. And can you all see the agenda at the uh, on the screen? As Lucy said, it's if you click on um, Google Drive on the left. If you do, you see that. Um, they don't call them apps. Do they call those, Lucy? The menu on the left hand the side. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the menu. Um, and there's there should be. It may, you might have to click on more apps. View more apps at the bottom to C Drive. If you click on that, I can see that uh, Regina, Ellen, myself are looking at it because it shows names under it. Um, and Charlie's in there. Did you do you see it, Ned? Yeah, I'm looking at it. Ned, okay, so again, maybe we should just we could just go through and I know Charlie started, but we could just start introducing each other and and maybe uh, since you're recording, Elizabeth. Yes. Um, when people are introducing each other, I have a feeling it's picking up your monitor. So if you click on that person's name and see them in the window, that's what's going to happen when you do the recording. Thank you, Lucy, because I've watched videos, other videos, and seen not seeing what they're talking about, so that's good to know. Well, I'll start with myself. I'm Elizabeth McCarthy. I'm the Technology Integration Specialist for Washington Central Supervisor Union. Um, I'm also on the Vital Lorne Board of for the Central Area, Vital Lorne Board of Directors, um, and I do other um, professional development around the state. I work with Lucy a lot with the Google tools. Um, and this has been a topic I've been interested in for a long time. And being on the Vitalearn board, I think it's an initiative that really fits uh, for the board's work. And maybe we could start with Charlie and start again going along the bottom. You know? OK. Well, I'll give you a little background. I'm very interested in this. Uh, as well, uh, being on a board member, but also because of the opportunity we have to reach out to the entire state. And so um, we have regional meetings that happen across the state, and um, Common Core this year is a hot topic for everybody, and anything that we can do or uh, put together um, can be then moved out across the state, and that's what I'm interested in, in doing, is taking what we're starting today and uh, working with the regions to uh, provide that information to the rest of the state. Thanks, Charlie. And David's mic doesn't work. So maybe if you could, um, David is um, also on the Vital Learn Board of Directors and a principal. Maybe, David, could you type in, in the chat window maybe what? A focus on this project that you have since we can't hear your your mic and maybe as he does that we can keep going and come back to David oh that's a good idea okay thank you that good idea um, and so maybe Ellen you could um, introduce yourself well I'm Ellen Thompson I'm the what am I director of instruction and information services in Essex town I can't see myself on the screen, so I have no idea if you're seeing the top of my head or not. You, you, you look great, Alan. You look okay. wonderful. Yeah. Um, I'm here. I wear two hats, so I'm the technology coordinator plus also curriculum. Um, and I guess I'm representing probably the Champlain Valley um, Curriculum Coordinators Consortium as well um, in this conversation. So great. the link between curriculum and technology. Great. Thank you. I'm Lucy Delabriere, and I am the Northwest Vital Learn Regional Coordinator, and I also do a lot of professional development. And Common Core is one that um, focuses of much of the uh, professional development in regarding to technology, integrating Common Core. How can we help technology um, and Common Core initiatives be more integrated? Oh, great. Thank you, Lucy. Hi, Ned. Hi. Um, I'm Ned Kirsch. I am uh, superintendent of Franklin West Supervisory Union and 
kind of technology director as well. Um, I'm the president of Vermont ASCD. Um, that's another piece. I uh, serve on the board of trustees for the uh, Vermont Superintendent Association. I'm also on the board for uh, the Snelling Center. So uh, I represent, I guess, different constituencies. Great. Great. Thank you, Ned. Good to have you here. And Peter. Hey, folks. Um, Peter Drescher, Education Technology Coordinator with the uh, newly created Agency of Education of the State of Vermont. Oh, uh, wow. Well. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I mean, this is a, a rich conversation. I'm, I'm, uh, thanks so much for Vitalern for uh, Elizabeth for um, putting this together. Um, I'm just really curious to hear what f folks are doing in the field around getting ready for this and, uh, you know, the whole matching of the Common Core. We did some work with the classroom scenarios a couple of years ago. I think folks are still using that. Our focus here at the department is to try to align that document with some of this work here. So, um, you know, just hoping to move forward with that. Um, my focus a lot in the last few months and probably in the next couple of months here coming forward is with the whole readiness tool piece. Um, that was a component last semester. Um, I just recently got, I just got a beta version of the readiness tool for this next semester, so um, we'll be looking at adding some more data in there as well as we move forward. So, <laughs> fun. Thanks, Peter. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I didn't Gina. realize that what Ned said, I mean, what Peter yeah. said made us all smile. We're all reacting with big smiles at, at Peter's um, announcements. <laughs> Okay, Regina Quinn, I'm the math consultant at the St. Johnsbury School. I do mostly professional development for the faculty. Um, some work with students, a lot of um, helping teachers do um, make sense of assessment data. Uh, we're a school that's um, a tier two or whatever the worst tier is <laughs> um, in need of improvement. And so I'm, I'm very fortunate to, to have this position. Um, one, of the, one of the things I'm most excited about is the potential for really good technology integration um, with the math standards. It's not explicit, but it's so, um, to, to, to carry out the math standards well, you would have a classroom and a school infused with technology. So um, I'd really, I'd love to help realize that that vision, you know, here at St. J, but also across the state. Great, exciting. Thank you, Regina. Um, so, and again, David had typed that his focus again. He's built teaching a course on this at Marlboro. Um, so now, actually, I'm trying to make sure, thinking that this is being recorded, I'd, I'd like to go back and um, look at the agenda. And Lucy, maybe you can advise on this, too, as far as note-taking. Um, we don't want to be looking at this document the whole time, um, but each other speaking. Is there a better way, do you know, to do that? Um, I think that if we all go down to the agenda. Uh, that's a yeah. good point. Um, I see it, but I'm not the one that's being recorded, so I have not tested that. Um, mm -hmm. um, Can you just copy it and save it on another thing and open it? Save it on another it's, uh, document. It, yeah, it's in a Google Doc. We could open. I could open another. Google Doc, right. but then I'm not looking at the screen. But let, well, we can just start and see. I think what I'd like to do is when people are talking about the topics, I'll just put. I'll just select your face and go back and forth that way. So what we see is the agenda, but when it's recording, we'll see you talking. Does that make sense? Lucy, do you think that will it work? It does. I was just trying to think about our my past work with that. And I think what I ended up doing on that last um, Google Hangout is mm -hmm. I kept, I recorded it, and I, as the technical person, just kept clicking on people so that the facilitator had constant um, okay. access to the agenda. So I think you're right. Um, since okay. you're recording it, yeah. you're going to have to do your own clicking back and forth. Okay, I'll do that. So again, looking at the agenda, you know, I think we've got 
I'm really happy having this team here. Um, but the first step is, well, what do we want to accomplish by all meeting? And um, I didn't have a clear answer, you know, pr no predefined notions, but I thought bringing together this group of people, something great's going to come out of it. And, and already I'm hearing some exciting things. But to, you know, so I think does anyone, you know, um, something to come out of today's meeting, um, um, I, you know, for myself would be a continuation of collaboration. But are, are there any other points that people want to, they can think about now, but even before we get to it, that, that might, they want some outcomes. I can think of a couple. Uh, one of the things that I'm hoping that we can get out of this is to really recognize the, uh, the type of pedagogy, or pedagogy, I guess it is, that you use in a classroom is really more important than finding a way to integrate a piece of technology. We, we've spent millions of dollars across the state putting technology into schools and we're still trying to look at how can I fit you know a spreadsheet into math and how can I fit this into that and, I'd, and I'm looking at this as a perfect opportunity to start working on that discussion. It, it, it's not just about taking what you've already done and adding in a piece of technology and say you've integrated technology. It's really about changing the way children learn and the way teachers teach. And here's an opportunity with the Common Core that really talks about items that are best suited for using technology in schools. But it does require uh, a different pedagogy and so if I could have one thing that came out would be a way that we could start that transformation process. Great. I, I, I agree. Good points Charlie. Um, so now I'm actually gonna I would so Charlie's um, uh, recording was there so I didn't take notes because I I'm, did. I'm doing it. In I, thank you Lucy. I, I just want to make sure. Um, so does anyone else have a, a, um, an add-on for that as accomplishments for today's meeting? No? I guess an action plan or um, mm -hmm. a plan of next steps of what we'll do to help um, achieve what we're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. That's a good point, Regina. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so uh, might be self-evident. Yeah, yeah. I hope, that. but you never know. I've gone to meetings where oh, you spin wheels and nothing comes out, but that's good. Um, so the, the next point on the agenda. Oh, did anyone have any else? I don't want to jump ahead, but I think maybe just have establishing some connections. Uh, I don't want to use gatekeepers. I want to use more like people who are watching. We can't see it all, and we can't read everything about the Common Core. But if I uh, found some, because of the lens I have on, if I notice two or three different things, and I want to go, I want to kind of um, find out their validity in the area of mathematics. I don't have that information to do that. But just even after today, uh, I know Regina has a real um, strong interest in background in mathematics so now if I've established a connection of who could I go to for to check to see um, the validity of materials that are coming in kind of filtering to, through some of the materials and having Regina give it a thumbs up makes me feel like oh good I can incorporate that in my work with teachers in a way that I feel confident even though I'm not a mathematics um, teacher. So can I piggyback on that? Is yeah, that go ahead. Yes, uh, Ellen. I think that probably um, what Lucy was talking about is what the curriculum coordinators are thinking about the most and that they are or we are in our separate districts kind of putting together the game plan for what, how we find and how we vet um, materials. And, and so I think that is a concern that we have that there's a lot of junk out there. Yeah. And how, and, and a lot of it has whiz bang, pop, and technology attached to it. 
and how do we be careful about how much we inundate teachers with stuff versus what's quality. So to me, what I would hope to get out of this is to not continue to do parallel play, but to be more in sync um, within a district around the work of the Common Core and technology together in the same room. Because mm -hmm. we can give very conflicting messages or make one can make one seem more simplistic than it is. And then yes. right now our teachers have a lot of content they need to learn. So we're in a kind of a funny period. It isn't just jump in and do. You actually have to understand what it is you're doing um, and why they've made the shifts in the way they did in the learning progression. So I don't know if that's too long to put in the notes, but um, it's about the parallel play piece and about making sure that we're in sync with each other. So Elizabeth, uh, not Elizabeth, um, Ellen, um, one of the things when you say parallel play, I think that a combination of times when we come together so that we can sync, times when we work parallel, and times when we're each tending our own gates, because if we all wait till we're all we do everything till we can all come to the same meeting and all watch the same gates, then uh, I think that we won't be as efficient. But if we know that uh, Elizabeth is watching, uh, Elizabeth, uh, Regina is watching a lot of the mathematics information mm -hmm. and um, you're watching a certain area, but constantly be checking in or have points where we check in so that we do have some parallel times, but also some times where we let our expertise go out and get things and bring it to the group. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, I, I agree. I just know that right now, regionally, we're doing a lot of work with math and ELA in in-depth sessions with our teacher leaders around the curriculum content. And I'm not sure that um, everybody's in that same room. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of content that's being pumped into people. So we have to figure out a way to, to help each of us. Eat. I mean, it shouldn't be different. Um, yeah. But there is a lot of content that's got to mm -hmm. get learned. Right. Can so, you give me an example of that, uh, just uh, quickly, Ellen? The, the regional sessions right now in math are really unpacking the learning progressions um, across K through 12. And so those are really in-depth look at math. It would be really great if technology was up at the front with it, and sometimes it is. But right now people are trying to understand why they made the big shift they did in sixth grade and what leads up to it. So it's that unpacking across grade levels around the content strands and why and the fact that things have moved. Same with literacy. Literacy has three or four pieces. The text complexity issue is huge. But teachers don't, they can't just do it. They need to understand what it is and what their teaching has to change in order to work with it. So I'm not sure if they go in tandem right from the get-go. Um, the use of infusing technology with or whether we need to do a little of content load first. I don't know the answer to that at this point. Well, um, okay. uh, it's just a question. Um, what could you sort of uh, give a vision of what teachers would need um, when we're talking about uh, bringing things together and providing things? Um, are we talking about materials or examples or? Um, I think most of your curriculum coordinators are avoiding materials right now because okay. materials, anything that's coming out right now is too soon. Um, and it's going to be quick fix. So we're really looking at um, depth of understanding and a lot, say in math, looking at those um, standards of practice and how those influence our teaching. Now that's where technology can come in because there's a lot of places in the standards of practice in math that ask teachers to enable their kids to have multiple answers to problems, to have flexible thinking within. So all of those things would be enhanced by a technological base. Okay, thanks. One of the things I'm attempting to do is to do the professional development in such a way that teachers are using things like Geometry Sketchpad to learn the content that they need for understanding the standards and for understanding um, how to use technology to bring that understanding about with their students. But I think if um, I think it's critical for the good um, technology used to be part of the early stage of um, understanding content. 
And I, 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 I think as far as also with the English language as well, I think keeping it separate, it, will, it never gets infused. I think it's, it can be part and parcel, um, similar to math. Well, English language arts is easier because yes. you're going to be required to, to, to read digital uh, media. So part of the whole mm -hmm. testing apparatus will include multiple text use. And so there's some ways where it quite quickly jumps out at you for right. ELA. It, yeah, much more than the math, yes. And one of the things that um, I've been doing, because it seems to jump out more ELA, I've been going to the math. Um, Common Core meetings that the curriculum coordinators have set up, and I think it is important that we have some representatives in the technology area sit there at the table with the math. And I don't pretend that I know have the background that the math people at the table do, but I'm watching constantly at what they gravitate towards, where, what problems are they trying to solve, and how they're trying to solve them. And meanwhile, I'm taking notes about what areas in technology might help that. But I don't bring that up at that meeting. I'm letting them unpack their content and do mm -hmm. what the facilitator is there to do with them. But then it'd be nice to have someone else um, that was there, like Regina in the mathematics, to say, this is what I heard and saw from my understanding of math, which is not as deep as yours, Regina. How how aligned am I? What am I picking up? What else? And maybe what I say is something Regina uh, with mathematics background will say, oh yeah, I was focusing on the math and I didn't even think about that part of technology integrating. So almost like conversations after those meetings, inviting some tech people who are almost planted in that room to watch the conversation yeah. and then have a subsequent meeting where you don't have all the math people, but you have a couple people who are interested uh, in having a debriefing. That sounds good. Yeah, I, I, and I, th I think one of the goals is to have it be in the room. I think in the past so much with curriculum um, and just working with teachers, it, it's sort of technology has been an afterthought. And now is a really perfect opportunity, as Charlie said, to make it integral um, while the work is being done. So it's getting in the room and being a player um, in a lot of places. That's. But, but I think we will need, like, there's tons of curriculum people who are representing the rest of the curriculum people. So let's say a district brings 10 people. How many people come to your math meeting? I mean, the, the math um, common core people, Ellen, is it like two or three per grade cluster? Yeah, we're, well, no, actually, I'm only a K district, so it's a little bit different. But um, we're supposed to bring teams of 10. I think I've got 12 on each of those groups. So I have representatives from um, K through 8 as well as administrators. So what would it be like if there was a team of 10 or 12 technology integrators that divide themselves the same way your math content people are dividing themselves and bringing back to their group? Um, and so the tech integration person from St. Johnsbury and Franklin West and U32 don't necessarily all have to be there, but that we kind of assign a person, a tech person, to go to each of those grade clusters and each of those ELA people and watch that um, level more precisely than the other things that they're watching. I mean, we're going to watch it all, but you can't be an expert in everything. Right. It's an idea. Um, right now, they're set up. Um, we pay um, by our teams. Mm -hmm. And our teams are our implementation teams back in our districts. Mm -hmm. So that would be a separate team. Um, so it would just be a different construct. Right. Um, okay. right now we're over max. They've actually had to split our regional um, ELA work into two days of times because we have too many people. <laughs> so, it's well, uh, so should we take inventory to see if there are some technology integration folks attending? Like I know if Ned has. Angelique attending from his district, and are there other ones there? I don't have the list, so I don't. I don't yeah. know for sure, but um, would that be helpful? And then figure out who's who takes the ownership of making that happen. Is it an organization like Vitalearn? Is it distributing the work because all the teams are maxed out, and who has 
who has interest, let's say that Angelique, I happen to know, is going to the high school math mm -hmm. uh, clusters. So she's got that covered. And then if um, some Regina, are you in a certain grade level, Regina? No, I'm the whole, the whole school system. So when you attend the math, uh, do you focus on particular grade levels, or you just I, I don't actually yeah I don't actually attend the sessions. Um, the principal selected teachers that she thought needed the professional development, and then I pick up on that when they're back okay. at school. I get it. Mm -hmm. so I'm just going to throw that out there and let us keep mm -hmm. moving on to the next agenda as a possible way okay. to um, be less spotty and more. Is this happening across the state? Uh, I'm sort of out of the loop of schools, but are, are they creating these uh, groups across the state in different supervisory unions and school districts? In, in two ESAs, so in LAPTA and CVED. Okay. So you have two different sessions going on um, run by the same people in each session. Well, actually, no, that's not true. That's in math. Um, the Lairds are doing um, the Northeast Kingdom one, and then they're also doing the Chittenden County CBED. And then we have Judy Carr, who's working with um, language arts people in CBED, which is the Champlain Valley region. Lucy, did you see that David um, has a couple of comments to you? Okay, meeting David's comments. Um, I like the idea, but what exactly would their responsibility be? Who's the there in your comment, David? Mm -hmm. I think he meant the tech people, didn't he? Mm -hmm. It was in reference to a being part of the meetings. The tech people attend. So I'm thinking of tech people being educational technologists, and so the ed tech would be. Um, I, we all have probably specialties and passions, and I'll use, I'm going to bring up Angelique because I've been sitting with her at, uh, she's from Franklin West. She has a background in mathematics. She wasn't a tech person. She was a mathematics teacher first, so it makes sense for her to be at the mathematics. So educational technology, maybe one of their responsibilities would be to um, find a grade cluster because most of these meetings are divided by grade clusters and be there to listen and watch and look for opportunities if if there's opportunity to interject um, in your small group discussions great but then meet together and have um, a debriefing after almost like a meeting after the meeting which makes for a lot of meetings with all the other tech ed tech people at um, after the Common Core unpacking, but also be really great if there was another curriculum person that was willing to attend two meetings that has that strong technology background. They're attending the meeting for their state, I um, mean, for their district and their grade clusters, and they have a responsibility to bring back and share. But would they want, would there be some people that have an interest? in doing the debrief session with technology, what we're doing now, actually. So, P Peter, I have a question for you as far as the state and the DOE and the professional development there. Are, is, is, as ed tech people, do you have a, is there an opportunity to participate and work with those teams? Or is, is that a question I shouldn't ask? I don't know. Well, um, it, it, I don't know. It seems to we we had it before Gail Taylor left. There was a um, she was she was the director of the uh, research standards and assessments group, and there was an implementation plan that was put together um, that didn't include technology folks on it. And I think what's happening now is there's been kind of a revamp of that implementation plan. But I, you know, speaking pretty honestly here, I'm I'm afraid that we are you know behind at this point behind where schools are, you know, uh, you know, where curriculum coordinators and, and, and maybe not the ESAs, but behind mm -hmm. some of the, um, you know, progress that schools have been making. So um, there's a little bit of fear that I have that, you know, we're, we're that, 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 that's going on. Um, but on the same, I just, just a quick comment, but on the same token, you know, I also want to make sure, um, I think it was Ellen who said it in the beginning, you know, 
I, I want to be more involved in the conversation with schools because what I what I hear and see more and more is there's I mean I you know I, I get them and I'm at the state level but I'm sure on the classroom level and in the administrator level the emails are going out you know a gazillion a day about tools and products and things that say you know they've just got a stamp on them that says we're aligned to the common core yeah. Yeah, and I don't right. think there's enough understanding about what that really means um, mm -hmm. and and you know I, I I just you know I hate the thing to think that people think that, you know, purchasing technology is going to be, you know, purchasing one of these technology programs is going to, you know, make the connection to using technology to address the common core. And I think there's things that we're already using, you know, you mm -hmm. folks who are, who are talking, we're already using some fantastic tools that can address many things in the ELA and the math right. um, for common core. So. Um, you know, it, 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 there's some gr good people working on it downstairs in the RSA, well, the former RSA office, and you know we are having some conversations. But I, w you know, we, we haven't we haven't been been involved as, as much as we, we you know I, I, I wish we were in the beginning. So. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Uh, Ned. My understanding well is said, Peter. Go ahead, Ned. My understanding is that you know districts are, are on their own. We're not going to get the help from the agency that we're all look for or ask for that it's really up to what I was told it's up to the superintendents in your district to make sure that this happens um, which is a little scary considering that there'd be possibility that going 64 different directions is out there not that it would but it's possible um, so you know with that in hand I think a lot of times we talk about you know what's the, the agency going to do what you know what kind I don't think it's good to come or will come or is planned to come kind of as Peter talked about. So, you know, I've also heard that some of the ESAs are probably not going to be functioning after this. Um, that we're only going to have a few ESAs in the state. ESAs in the state. Mm -hmm. So, right. you know, I think we're at a juncture now where the Common Core is coming. There's going to be a significant J curve in our scores. There's going to be no relation to the kneecap scores. There's going to be public outcry. Uh, and I think that we really need to start preparing our communities and our teachers about what that's going to mean. And, you know, like David said, what, is, what does Alliance with Common Core actually mean? You know, I think we all have different interpretations of that. We get deluged, the deluged with stuff on it every single day. Right. Not right. to be all gloom and gloom, but... So I, I actually think, okay. Ned, our region is positioned a little differently because we do have a um, right. tech assisting group that meets. We have 14 curriculum coordinators who get together monthly, and we have different work sessions, and we're putting together that regional work. So I right. don't think we we're all as alone as, as, <laughs> as I could be, as I might be. Well, we um, meet as superintendents, too. So I think our region is in one spot. I'm just worried about other regions. Yeah, I agree with you there. I think, I think you're right. I think... Um, I think we've made a concerted effort over the last few years, for sure, to make sure we're lining up the superintendent group and the curriculum coordinator group, and then also the Common Core coming down at the same time. Okay. I've been around the state a lot, okay. and um, I've seen a lot of schools. And what I what I tend to find is that um, the interest in using technology uh, has barriers. And so the barriers aren't always uh, not knowing how to use a piece of software. They could be uh, we don't use email in our school, or it could be uh, we're not going to allow this or that, or we block this, or if you look at the blogs today, uh, we can't have open access because kids will get in trouble and that sort of thing. And so there's some huge issues that schools don't have the answers to. And when I ask the question, you know, uh, why does this happen, or why, why, why don't you have email for your kids, for example? And they say, well, that's the way it's always been here. And I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, shocked at times to see that. And so, you're right about the Northwest region being um, very active. Um, I go to the five regions uh, four times a year. And um, it's a small group, and it's usually 10 people at the most sometimes, and um, it's very difficult to um, talk about moving forward 
when they have barriers in their schools that uh, really say, well, we can't do that in our school, so why am I going to get professional development in Google Docs or whatever you're doing? So there, there is a, a difference in the regions for sure. One of the things that I um, wrote in the chat window was about equity, what kind of piggyback on what Charlie said. If equity as a state, me, to me it means bringing the wealth of understanding and resources because of our population dense, denser area to help our remote areas be part of the conversation. I don't know who <coughs> takes that on. You know, I mean, I was from the Northeast Kingdom and I know the difference between uh, working yeah. with the resources that we had there to the resources that I have here. The wealth of resources and connection I have is amazing. And so maybe one of our things we need to do once in a while is, as an organization, is to look at what do we mean by equity? Is that part of our mission? If it is part of our mission, maybe it is to um, reach out and bring out while uh, the understanding, the resources, the work that the Northwest is doing to the other regions that are more remote. That, um, the, that point you make, Lucy, just reminded me of the meeting in um, South Burlington about a month ago, the Vital Learn meeting, where um, there must have been 70 people there and talking about this very topic. And, um, you know, we're in the Northeast Vital Learn meetings, we have maybe you know, very handful of people, but you know, how do we continue that energy and excitement that happened in that meeting across the state? So, I think people are interested across the state, mm -hmm. uh, but we don't have the information to give to them. That's right. sort yep. of like what Ellen was talking about. You know, we've got some basic information, but um, how do you how do you help a school uh, that really? hasn't used a lot of the technology or doesn't have a, a history of having technology even in their school. Um, so when we start talking about relating the common core to the, uh, where technology happens, that's a huge jump. I mean, you talk about the jump going from what we did previously to the common core. Well, you throw in, they have really no history with technology on that, it's a mighty challenge for them. And um, that's what I'm interested in, trying to find ways in which we can, I think you have to help people get a disposition. You know, if your disposition is to look up words in the dictionary, that's where you look them up all the time. If your disposition is to look it up online, that's where you do it. And so if your disposition in education is not to use technology but use something else, that's quite a barrier for schools, especially when we see what can happen or what is possible with the Common Core and the relationship to using technology to, to meet those standards for the children. All right, I'm going to check on the agenda here um, and see. Um, Thanks for taking the notes, Lucy. I don't think everything's in the right place. We can uh, I know. I was like, okay, where are we now? Um, so, I, you know, I think that was, we started with what do we want to accomplish, and I think we covered a lot of topics. But, um, you know, another point, we, we, again, what do we know about technology-related expectation, explicit or implicit? You know, how do, you know, we all know different levels of de or degree of that, but, um, how do we take what we know or how do we collaborate on what we know and make it un uh, available to others? Um. Sometimes I picture um, a document that you know looks like the Common Core on one side but then has um, examples, clips, something that brings to life mm -hmm. what it looks like when students and teachers are really engaged in that kind of learning mm -hmm. and how technology is seamlessly part of it at, at times, not part of it at times. And, um, you know, I, I think um, there's so much there's, there's so much that people need to do just to understand the, the content, I think both in 
language arts as well as in math, um, that I, I think there's little mental energy left for then really, you know, Im implying what what does that look like with mm -hmm. with technology with with best practices. Mm -hmm. So um, I just think you know, could we do something that would make it very easy, to, like without a lot of searching around, but be be able to you know look at what are some really effective uses. Yeah. There's some there's some good sites out there. I mean, there's if you look at is it the Teacher Channel for their Common Core? They have, and they use video, which to me is it's you see a live class and a teacher sh sh showing exactly what they're doing. And some you know some is good, some are better. But I th mm -hmm. I think the idea of using video and um, as models would be a, a relevant way to quickly do that. It's also a good way to get, uh, you know, some good public relations. Uh, a video put out there, um, people will look at, you know, as long as it's two minutes or three minutes long, more than a document that's, you know, 20 pages long, or, a, you know, a unit plan that's four or five pages long. It's, it's so much different to be able to actually see what you're talking about than it is to read and interpret what that would look like afterwards. <laughs> so I do agree that it would be nice to have that. We do have the scenarios out there. And if you could find something like that that was able to be put into a video, the hard part is here we have all these teachers working their buns off trying to do this, and someone comes up to them and says, oh, can you make a video of what you're doing? just adds to what that person's doing. So that that's my only difficulty with getting it, but I really like the idea of a video. Right. One of the things that um, came up at the Northwest Vital Learn meeting was um, that video piece. And the technology integration matrix that both Florida and Arizona have. Sorry, sorry, um, Lucy. I'm looking at a picture instead. Okay. Of so what I was going to say is I put a screen on. A sc okay. A screen share for a second. Mm -hmm. This is not the technology integration matrix. I couldn't do two screen shares side by side. But um, so this uh, is an example of a document that people liked the format that kind of matched. I brought this up when um, Regina was talking. Um, not dissecting the content yet, but looking at the format. Um, and everybody seemed to gr gravitate towards this format yeah. as uh, easy to read and a side-by-side -side type of thing. It might not be the end all, but with one more component to it, and that is those little videos for the two or three minute videos. So mm -hmm. I, I'll put a link to this in the chat window or in the, and in the minutes so we can look at it later. I am not advocating that the content has been vetted. It's just it kind of reminded me of what Regina was talking about. Yeah. If we went, if we did go that direction, I think about in math the, the standards for practice are are you know very much like the vital results were. And it's still very hard for people to grasp what that looks like. And I think mm -hmm. if if we had example, and, and if we had examples that showed, you know, good practice with students, you know, create creatively exploring topics with technology. I have I've done some very rough footage, um, so I'd, I'd be willing to do more mm -hmm. of that. But you know, the standards for practice go across all of the grades, and I think if we saw a few examples. Of that, it also goes across content and um, anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Regina, one of the things I've been trying to do is to get stories from people, and I've gotten some people who have emailed me and said, "Come see what's happening at uh, one of them was a teacher from Essex." As soon as I mm -hmm. put out that, I was interested in grabbing that grabbing that little video footage. Yeah. The teacher didn't have to do it, and this Essex. Uh, Oh, that nice. integrator came back and said, you need to come see what's happening in this second grade classroom in Essex. So I live nearby and I could go out and take a, and do that, but I do think Charlie's right that people don't have time to, to do it exactly. all. So maybe one of the things we can coordinate on is 
to grab some um, some video clips and align them in a matrix in a way that makes sense and helps promote uh, a deeper understanding. Um, I know I had a chance to do some of that when uh, and Franklin West when was just helping people reflect. It really only took about 10 minutes of me being with Ned in his office for mm -hmm. him to reflect on a, a question that we were asking and then putting it all together told the story and was useful after. Oh, and I've been seeing mm -hmm. more and more examples of that. Right. I'm wondering if that's one way that we can work together is to find the resources and come up with a systemic way mm -hmm. to make it happen mm -hmm. instead of talking about it happening. Yeah, yeah, that's I'm exciting. All for that. Me too. I, yeah, I think that's a really exciting pro project that this could vital learn could direct. Um, another piece, I think, just the the fact that we're talking live using this tool, the idea of building community using these tools. I, you know, I belong to the Google Certified Trainer, which is this lively, dynamic community where. Um, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of time on it to learn a lot from other people because there's so, it's such a huge collective of pe people just sharing what they know, and I don't know the reality of building that sort of dynamic um, shared knowledge community um, using the Google Hangouts, the Google Communities, um, that sort of thing. I just posted something here about VE2, or Vermont Education Exchange, which Sigrid is working on. I'm sure she'd talk about that if she was here. But, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it's growing a lot. We're really kind of excited about the success it's had, and uh, the Common Core resources will move, be moved over there. I think they were supposed to be done in January 1st, but we were in there, but that's a good place for mm -hmm. collaborating. Anyways. Yeah. Peter, can you post to that, or just look at things there? You, you can you can actually just look at things there too. Um, you do have to have an account, but you know you just you start up and put in an account, and you can you can get in. Can you, can you put the link in there, and I'll add it to the notes, Peter, or you can add it to the notes. <laughs> sure, I will. Yep, yep. Cool. All right. Um, let's look at the agenda again. The notes are. I'm getting. I know. I'm. No, I'm that's all right. Copy and paste and put them in the right place. No, that's all right. I'll just scroll down. Um, um, so what efforts are currently exist? Well, Peter just mentioned again the the, the the VE2 is the there's Common Core material in that website, um, but efforts that link C CSS and uses of technology to make it more apparent. Um, you know, I, other than what individuals are doing, I don't think there's a collective effort. Um, well, Vital Learn has. Uh, established um, over the past two years about 60 classroom teachers that have been identified as innovative and transformative in their teaching practices. Yep. Um, we're in the process of creating a PLN with those people in there. So mm -hmm. there is um, an opportunity here to be able to at least uh, get some information and also ask those people to participate in vetting some of the things that we're talking about. Um, I, I just know that the more we build a communication network for teachers, uh, the more that they'll take advantage of it. And it's one way we can reach out to the whole state in, in doing it that way. So there is some potential there. Uh, and Prue, please, uh, please come to the office. And Prue, please come to the office. A way to uh, spread that information out. We could mm -hmm. ask those folks to help us and, and get information back from them. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's going to be something that we hope to expand. Uh, and we could use the regional meetings to put on professional development. So yep. um, what I was hoping is that um, there would be something put together in time for Vital Learn to be able to take the last two meetings of the year and uh, show what's happening to uh, other regions and, and bring them in and try to, you know, encourage them to participate with what's what. So Charlie, um, since we have Alan from the curriculum and Ned as a superintendent and DOE person, um, Peter, 
what would be the things that we uh, Regina I didn't mean to leave you out and Regina <laughs> what would be the things that I would like to ask you for that we could do at Vital Learn if we knowing that we have two meetings left this year we're halfway through our meetings what would you think would be the most meaningful thing that we could do um, or put on our agendas structure our next two meetings so that it would um, it would move us towards next steps whatever they are Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's a, a big piece. I think one is, I think ski, schools need to know that um, they aren't alone in the belief that technology is going to transform education. It's going to change education. A lot of times people are, are hesitant. They don't have the information. Uh, the information that they get is not always uh, vetted or valid. Uh, and so a lot of people are uh, treading very thin with the technology. So some way that we could bring this out to the forefront so it becomes a topic, not only in our schools, but in our communities and in our, our uh, businesses, so that uh, you know, it isn't just another initiative that's coming down on education that in the next 10 years will move away. Um, it's this opportunity. We've got the SBAC happening. It's going to be happening in 2014, Peter. Is that when it that happens? Yeah, in 15. 2014, 14, 15 school 15. year, but 15, yeah. You know, and, and that has got to be a, a, one of the strongest moves for technology we've had in the state that I've ever seen. I mean, your kids have to take the test. You have to have the technology so they can do it. Um, and I think that that's the kind of message we need to say about the Common Core. You know, you have to have the technology to do this. Right now, what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing is a lot of the schools are talking about the Common Core and technology is not even a conversation in there. It, it happens if yes. there's a person there at the meeting. It happens if someone happens to say, oh, I saw this teacher working on this particular thing. But it needs to be an integral piece. Somehow, how do we get it to become uh, an integral piece? Something that you can't do it without it. And SBAC is a perfect example. You can't do it without it. Charlie, I think I, that uh, technology has already transformed education. And I think that we need to kind of move beyond that, that it may or it already has. And it's not smart boards, it's not iPads, it's not Google, it's whatever it is, is what's transforming for that day. You know, when kids come to school, they shouldn't power down from what their lives are regularly. And I think that's the transformation. Um, so part of me just wants to, you know, I want to yeah. leave that, you know, will it or won't it conversation behind us and I know it's easy for me to say because I have and other people haven't but we have to move beyond that and have to show people that you know this is what kids do every day this is what adults do every day in the work world and you know at school we work mm -hmm. with technology we work with other people we, we collaborate if we don't know something we work with other people to try to find the answers you know it's not a simple yes no question anymore and you know, I think we still give people too much leeway to, to decide. You know? Yeah. The decision's over. Um, yeah. Well, I totally I agree. Know. I totally I know agree. We're, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, I we're not there. I know. We out. We keep we keep giving people like, all right, well, maybe put yeah. your big toe in. If smart boards didn't work, you can take your big toe out now. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Um, uh, you know, I started teaching in the early 90s at Cabot School, and it was right at the, like, New American Schools, Transforming Education, and it was so exciting. Um, but it's, it's I, maybe it's because I'm in the Northeast Kingdom, but um, I, f I find the state of technology is, like, utterly depressing. And, I, you know, I think it has such great potential the way it really is, at least here, and I'm sorry if this is being, uh, you know, uh, recorded, but I, I, it's it's abysmal. It's abysmal. There are a couple, maybe a couple little highlights. It it it's 
we're so not transformed at this point. And, um, you know, I don't do as much statewide as I used to, so I don't really have, you know, that the broad perspective at this point. But I think about, um, you know, what can we do to, like, really um, inspire, make it fun, make it, um, you know, make, make it seem more accessible to people who... I, there's there's no directive there's little support and I, there's even less time for you know the kind of professional development that's needed I think we have to like light fires to excite people at this point because in two years when the test results come out there you know I I'm also not too optimistic about how we're going to start off. Like, like Ned said, it's probably going to be quite bad. Um, but then we're going to have people in a reactive state, you know, trying to fix things. I think right now, what can we do to like inspire and excite? So that's 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 my charge to try to learn for the last two meetings. So here, uh, <laughs> you know, one thing that we've done with the VSA, and Elliot and I both served on this committee, was we put together the VSA. Quality, what is a quality education in Vermont? You know, and to me, and the State Board of Education has taken that and endorsed it. Yeah. To me, that's, that's exciting. To me, that talks about what education should be in every single school, in every single school district in this state, not just the ones that we work in, but all of them. And to me, that's the exciting piece. And, you know, all the superintendents are supposed to have begun talking with their, I know you're laughing, Ellen. Oh, um, I can see you. Uh, we've begun talking with people in the districts, their boards, about this is what education will look like in the future. A lot of people spent almost two years on that document. Um, if I was really quick right now, I post it up here on the corner. Um, but to me, that's exciting. To me, it's not just about the technology. It's about how kids learn, what we talk about, what the expectations are. You know, and kids need to be turned on in school. I mean, I, I it's. Okay. Yeah. So the, so the other good hey, news is Go ahead, Alan. the Common Core is actually much more holistic. In other words, yes. it actually takes, um, yeah. we've gone through a period of curriculum time, which is kind of mm -hmm. scary to me, where things have been parsed out and, and set up into skill lists and little <laughs> points of information that you have to go through each gate to get to the end. And what the Common Core actually says is you actually have to read like a reader and you have to respond like a reader. So yeah. it, it's no longer taking the five pillars of literacy and keeping yes. them separately. It's about actually putting them in the room together. So when you talk about the scenarios and you talk about some of those other things to do that you did with the Tech GEs, mm -hmm. the Common Core is much better suited to show teachers what it looks like in action with technology than mm -hmm. any we've had before for the last yes. years. Yeah. So it's but mm -hmm. but as I said, there's still a content need to understand because you have teachers who've been sort of drilled and skilled on GE language, which yes. is test indicators. And yeah. now what they have to do is say, I've got this thing I need kids to be able to do, and I need to construct my teaching in a way that gets them to it with depth and rigor. So that whole idea of depth and rigor, I think, is where technology is going to be really, really needed to help teachers see the breadth of what they need kids to be able to do. And there's a mindset that's going to have to shift from yes. going from ease to Common Core. And right. then, we're not there yet. I mean, people are just beginning to understand that, to me, it's a breath of fresh air. It's like something brand new again. It's not <laughs> brand new because it wasn't here before. Um, yeah. But now we know more about um, some of the things that are held inside of it. So this is an opportunity. It's a huge mm -hmm. opportunity. It is, yeah. It sure is. <laughs> cool. I, I, have a com I have a comment along those lines. Um, I'm often struck by the way that um, that we as adults and teachers kind of hold off on really delving into what technology can do for students. And the example that I bring up, and it's kind of been my little soapbox for the last couple of months thinking about this, but um, you know, we, we seem to have this, I, and I see, I hear this, and I see this a lot when I when I visit classrooms, that there's a that there's I, it truly is a fallacy from what I see, but we have this idea that kids know how to use the technology, 
that if we put the device in their hands, if we put the computer in their hands, mm-hmm. they're going to know how to do it. And that is so far from the truth. Um, and I think that it, it doesn't it, it doesn't mean that the teacher has to be super tech savvy. It's a teaching skill about how you have students look for information, determine it's valid, synthesize it with other information, and put together something that's you know, authentic and really focusing on the learning. And I think we've, we've kind of left that behind. And that's a basic teaching process principle that we need to apply to the world of technology and as uh, Elena maybe you just said it but you know this opportunity of having the common core and having kind of a new curriculum that we've got to focus on and bring our kids this is the opportunity that we have to kind of come back to that core teaching principle about how kids look for information. I mean, going back to you know your old library skills or whatever, it's the same kind of thing. And we have to get rid of this notion that, number one, the teachers have to be expert in every one of these apps that's coming out you know, every 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. And you know, we don't need to do that. But we, what we do need to do is understand that the kids will know how to push all the buttons, but they won't know what to do with it. And you know, sometimes, you know, the, the conversation around here sometimes comes around to, you know, well, we're going to get rid of teachers because technology will take over. That, that is just malarkey. You know, it's just malarkey. It's like if there's anything we need right now, it's people really understand how you use the tool to gather the information that is, you know, you know, over our heads that we, that we see. So, mm-hmm. and, and I think that's the problem is we get so overwhelmed by that. And teachers get so overwhelmed by that that we lose sight that it's just still finding the right nugget or putting together the right to, you know tools, et cetera, et cetera. So, I, I think you know this Common Core conversation is a is a good opportunity for coming back to that. Yeah, I think. People look at it as if this or that. You know, it's it's not this or that. It's not oh, there's too much technology or there's not enough technology. It's right. whatever you need. You know? yeah. Ubiquitous right. is part of what you do. And I think that's where we have to get to instead of just having it be an add-on. I still think, like you said, Peter, people think it's an add-on. And you know, we've always said, oh, well, there's smart kids in the class. They'll show me how to do it. And we've kind of said, OK, that's a great idea. It's a terrible idea. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. You know? <laughs> Well I, well, I think this conversation, though, is making, it's very exciting to hear all this. And it, um, how do we bring this to every school in every district in the state? I mean, I, and, and have, have the same, same premise that Common Core is this great opportunity, and we can really leverage the technology. Um, I don't have an answer to that. But. I don't know. I, I still think it's got to be public somehow. You know, um, if it's not in front of you, it's out of your view. And, uh, you know, I, I believe everybody at this meeting today has the right ideas about education. But I don't know if there are a lot of other people who agree with us. And I think that um, somehow, that that's got to be brought up. That's got to be a, a question that people ask, so that parents ask the question, um, and and the communities ask the question. You know, are we really giving our kids the best education here in the state of Vermont? And you know, if you go to the school and you talk to people, there are a lot of parents there who say yes. This is a great school. This I love this school. My kids are doing wonderful. They don't sometimes understand what they could be doing. They're only looking at what they are doing. And, you know, our schools are good places for kids. I'm going to um, check in on the agenda and. That. Again, I think this brings us to the point again how can we seize this? Um, not only to improve tech integration practice, but to address uh, the common, co- common core and, you know, make learning authentic. Um, so that would bring us to really the act, what are our next steps? How do we take this excitement and, I, I, and, and, and sell it? I, I, you know, not sell it, but really the whole idea of, of what everybody here is talking about. And from Vitalearn, 
and how do we bring it to teachers? And I'm thinking about a video um, that there was this guy. The, the most important person in being the leader is not the first person to do it, it's the second person to do it. I don't know if anybody remembers the Dancing Man on the Mountain video, if you've seen it. We could even watch it together. <laughs> yeah, I know, but, we could. Um, which is an interesting way to use uh, Google Hangout. But Ned brought up uh, his blog in the chat window, fwsu.blog, and mm -hmm. that blogging, having one person put an example up there, having the next person yeah. follow it and then the third person follow it like those examples that Charlie's talking about the things nice. the what um, if we wait till we have a nice. matrix so we'll probably end up nah. with something that dissects it like Ellen yeah. is warning us not to do so right, yeah. if we had a place where we could start to stream together these examples and they pick up momentum I am feeling that eventually we would have enough, uh, I want to say, um, pieces, ingredients that just start to stream into a central location where the, that location could be and by people who are passionate and committed that eventually would start to sh take shape and if people like Regina start to look at matrices and ways to organize it around math practice and um, some of the um, comments that Ellen made, I want to scroll back and get her quotes right, um, start to pop and we start to feel that. Could that make us take a next step sooner than waiting till we have this whole holistic plan? I mean, the Vermont superintendents did a lot of it with the quality standards. I just, I kind of want to just jump in and, and start to do something that brings all these ideas together as one next steps while having a bigger, more holistic architectural kind of approach to it happening parallel. I like the idea of a blog. Uh, can it be a collaborative that anybody could post to it? I mean, that's... I don't think it needs to be the only yeah. thing, but could we yeah. do one baby step? Yeah. While we're yeah. also working, not just say, check, we've done it now, like also be working towards some of the bigger ideas that we've discussed here. I'm kind of excited about the new um, Google communities um, because it, it does, I've already, you know, we opened it in a week and there are 100 people there and it's, it's, it's a way to have a conversation like this um, and, but it's easy, it's not like you have to go to a site, it's part of your mail, if you use Gmail, I guess. Um, I, I don't know. There's lots of options. I'm... Hey, gang, I got to go. Thanks for Yeah, me. I got I to go, too. Thank you, Peter. Bye-bye. Um, right, maybe we could wrap up. And, I mean, we can just, we can go through all of, the, you know, the notes that we've taken and some of the points. People have already mentioned some concrete things to start with. And, and I think that the regional meetings that are coming up, if we could focus on those and maybe invite um, some some people here or some other content or curriculum people to participate, I think it'd be great to get um, lots of the people in the room, both um, curriculum and the technology integrationists. Um, were there any other ideas of that? Well, I know that we're um, that Ellen and her coordinator. Curriculum Coordinators Group has invited us in a week, I think. Um, Friday. 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 This week. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> um, to continue the conversation. So I think maybe we kind of um, toiled some soil today and maybe that'll be one of the next steps. Right. Well, and I think starting the, continuing the conversation is key. Um, and, and because I, you know, I, I attended a, a I rarely meet with our curriculum people, which is unfortunate. And I attended a, a curriculum meeting Friday, and it was really exciting to be in the room and hearing, you know, a lot of the being able to share what I do and 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 hearing what they're doing. And it, I, we don't do that often enough in our district, anyway. Uh, so, did anybody else want to add or finish? to the point. I really appreciate you all um, participating and sharing your ideas.
Yeah, I, I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. And, uh, <laughs> oh, wait, we, have, we all have to do that. I always want to do that. I mean, you have to take the Google effects. At the end? <laughs> yeah, it's like, I and, and choose a, uh, I think Ned's been... <laughs> taking advantage, <laughs> taking advantage of the, uh, yeah. the the Google tools. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, there we go. I like that. Right. Do you know how to, Alan? Do you, do you see where Google effects are? I do, but I can't see myself. Oh, we don't. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> all right. This is great. Yeah, that was good. So thanks for. Uh, Thank you. Oh, there we go. All right. All right. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Okay. And and I hope I hope we can meet again sometime. Um, yeah. It'd be great. Thank you all. all right, bye. Okay. Bye. Thank bye. you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye.